So far in 2023, New Balance has released two basketball models, and they have recalled both of them. Is it because of bad performance? Let's talk about it. What's up guys, welcome back to another Wear Testers kind of performance review. My name is Jackson. Today we're talking about the two discontinued New Balance basketball models, the Fresh Foam BB and the Kawhi 3. This is gonna look a little bit different than my typical performance review, mostly because both of these shoes have been discontinued. We have a problem. We have a problem. So if you wanna get a pair to play in and you haven't already, you're gonna have to go to somewhere like eBay or StockX to get a pair. And one other thing is that near the tail end of my testing of both of these shoes, I broke my foot. No! 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 I've gotten a good amount of run in each pair, so I can still give you a pretty good glimpse of what the performance looks like. But yeah, speaking of that broken foot, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know the deal. It's been more than a month since I broke it, and the healing has been very slow. So is there a timetable for me to get back on the basketball court? No, it'll happen eventually, it's just gonna depend on how fast or slow my foot wants to heal. But anyways, let's get into this shoe and this shoe and why the heck were they discontinued by New Balance. Both the Fresh Foam BB and the Kawhi 3 released in February and I was really excited for both because of how great this shoe right here was, it's the, it's the 2 AV3. But because of that, I was really, really anticipating both of these shoes, especially this one, because my hope was that the Fresh Foam BB was gonna be a 2 AV3 with more impact protection. Now I'll get into the performance of it here in a minute, but the reason that New Balance recalled this shoe back in March is apparently because of some outsole cracking. I didn't experience any of that. I don't know where the cracks are even supposed to be. There are some little spots down there that are kind of carved out, so that might be where it is. I don't know. Yeah, Fresh Foam BB had quality control issues with the outsole, whereas on the Kawhi 3, I actually did notice the quality control issue that was at play here, and that is on the top eyelet on the medial side. It actually happened on both of my shoes, both my left and right shoe. And as you can, and as you can see, I hope you can see right here. And uh, yeah, this metal eyelet right here is coming clear off the shoe. I didn't actually notice it until New Balance said something and pulled it from the market. It didn't affect anything while I was playing in the shoe, but I anticipate that if I would have kept wearing them, that those metal eyelets would have straight up just come off the shoe. It only happened on the medial side. The lateral side eyelets were just fine. Why? I don't know. But yeah, it's a bummer because I did enjoy playing in the Kawhi 3. But with New Balance really trying to assert itself in the basketball world, having a little blunder like this it's not good. I mean, props to New Balance for getting this issue figured out, and I guess by figured out, I mean just by pulling the shoes so that people can't buy them anymore. I'm not sure how customer service is handling these issues if people are calling them or emailing them, telling them about it. If you've had an issue with either the Kawhi 3 or the Fresh Foam BB, drop a comment and let me know, one, what it is, two, has it affected performance, and three, have you contacted New Balance about it, and four, how has New Balance responded to that? I'm curious to know. But anyways, let's get into the performance of each of these models. Just take a note of those quality control issues that I had or didn't have, that I guess some other people have had. I was looking on the internet, I didn't find anybody who was actually having an issue with these. But let's get into the performance. First, let's talk about the traction. On the Fresh Foam BB, you've got this multi-directional, I don't even know how to describe this pattern, and there's a lot of circles, or you know, kinda like if a you told a four-year-old to draw a bunch of circles. Whatever you want to call the pattern, I had no issues with it and it worked really well. My pair does have translucent rubber and thus it picked up a little bit of dust. So when I was playing on some really bad courts, I would have to continue to wipe the outsoles in between plays just to make sure that I was covered. But wiping the dust off the soles was not an issue and so the traction was pretty solid. The pattern does wrap up the medial side forefoot. So if you're out there moving like Kemba Walker or Kyrie Irving, these are gonna have you covered. I didn't have a chance to play in them outside, but judging by the thickness of the tread, as well as the fact that it's not the softest rubber I've ever felt in my life, you could take them outside and I think they would at least be average durability wise. But speaking of a traction pattern that is made for outdoor use, yeah. This traction pattern is really beefy. There's a lot of rubber here on the outsole and the rubber itself is fairly hard, especially 
for a modern basketball shoe. It worked great indoors. It doesn't squeak as much as the Fresh Foam BBs or as much as the 2AV3s, but it works. With dust in the equation, you're gonna have to wipe the outsoles a little bit more frequently than the Fresh Foam BBs. But if your gym is decent, at least, you're gonna be totally satisfied with the traction. And if you play outdoors, this would be a great option if you could go buy them in stores. With that out of the way, let's get into cushion. Big difference between the two of these shoes. As the name suggests, the Fresh Foam BB features Fresh Foam all throughout the midsole. What is Fresh Foam? Well, according to New Balance, it's made of small beads of foam which are very resilient and allow you to cover a good number of kilometers in a comfortable fashion. That's for a running shoe. The implementation of the fresh foam here is definitely firmer than it is on the running line. It isn't my favorite cushion setup, but it is a pretty good option if you're after impact protection because they have a lot of it. Court feel was not a strong suit here, especially when you compare it to the 2A V3, which feels like you're right on top of the floor. But if you don't care about that as much as you care about having impact protection, then I think you will really enjoy the fresh foam setup here. The Kawhi 3, on the other hand, has fuel cell through the midsole. And you kind of know how that feels. If you've played in either the Kawhi 1 or the Kawhi 2, it's pretty stiff. It's definitely not plush. Impact protection, I feel, wasn't as good as the Fresh Foam BBs. I don't know if you're any closer to the ground in the Kawhi 3, but court feel felt a little bit better. For me personally, I like the stability. And with the Energy Arc spring plate here, you do feel a little, a little bit of that snappy responsiveness that you would hope to feel with a spring plate set up like this. Cushion reminded me a little bit of the Puma Rise Nitro kind of similar with this plate doing most of the work as far as any type of responsiveness that you feel because the foam in the midsole is dense and doesn't feel like a whole lot. The materials, uh, I didn't like the materials very much on the Fresh Foam BB. You have a fit weave upper, a lot of crispy weave and some fuse overlays. Overall, not my favorite. Doesn't flex that well doesn't really conform to the shape of your foot the way that I hoped it would. It's not terrible. It's not the KD4 upper. That upper was terrible. And it's not as good as the Kawhi 3, if you ask me. The Kawhi 3, you've kind of got a base layer of mesh with some synthetic layering over the top of it. It looks awesome. It's pretty soft and it breaks in nicely. It's well padded as well. Both shoes have nice padding there on the tongue. You'll get a little more breathability out of the Fresh Foam BB than you will the Kawhi 3, but the Kawhi 3 is built like a tank and I think if you took them outside not only would the outsole hold up really well, but I think the upper would also hold up really well. I also really like this collar material and the way that it's set up on the Kawhi 3. It feels really comfortable while also helping stay locked down. This felt material in the heel of the Fresh Foam BB, it's whatever. It's not quite as soft and forgiving back there. So now the trickiest part, really for both shoes I think, is the fit. I actually got two pairs of the Fresh Foam BB. The first one was in my true size 12, and it was too long. I had to size down to an 11 and a half. Shout out to Drew for sending me this pair in an 11 and a half. You love me, you really love me. So I'd say if you have narrow or normal sized feet, go down a half size. If you have wide feet, go with your true size. On the Kawhi 3, I also got my true size in the heel and the midfoot. The fit was awesome. I had a little bit too much room in the forefoot. These aren't quite as long as the Fresh Foam BB, and I wasn't able to try to buy a half size down from my true size just to compare. I think going down a half size might have made the fit a little bit tight, while my true size might not quite have been tight enough. It didn't really cause me any issues. It did just mean that I had a nice funky toe bubble just because of the extra volume, especially there above my toe. On the Fresh Foam BB, once I went a half size down, I thought the fit was pretty good. But as far as actual lockdown, keeping my foot in place. Heel was awesome, midfoot good, forefoot good. So once I got the fit right, support was also really good on the Fresh Foam BB. You got a flat base, a little bit of a narrow base uh, compared to compared to these, and also compared to the 2AV3 if you're wanting to compare all the models in New Balance's basketball line. I would have liked to have been a little lower to the ground just to feel a little more in control, but they fit good. They're nice and sturdy. You know, you can't bend this thing in half, which is Always a good thing. But these right here, these are tanks. Again, that energy arc plate right here 
it's keeping things locked down, but then giving you a nice little spring. I'm not that big of a guy, so I might not be utilizing it to its full potential. This is another thing. If you have a pair of these and you want to drop a comment, let me know what you think about that energy arc system. I'd love to hear it. Just like the rest of the Kawhi line, these are tanks, but they're not too stiff. The Kawhi one was too stiff. I normally like lighter, lower, more agile shoes, and I still enjoyed playing in these. One other aspect of these shoes is the weight. And as you would expect, the Kawhi 3 weighs more and feels like it. So really my complaints with the Fresh Foam BB, uh, lack of court feel, and also the less than stellar material setup. While on the Kawhi, I would like to see a little bit more of a refined toe box area and just an ever so slightly snugger fit up there. And please, New Balance, I know Chris said it in his initial video on the Kawhi 3 as well, put in some kind of cushion that feels like anything in the Kawhi line. This is your signature line right here. All in all, I enjoyed playing in the Fresh Foam BB and the Kawhi 3 and I think it's a shame that people aren't gonna really get to experience them. And I do think that there is a market for the Fresh Foam BB, and there is a market for the Kawhi 3. People who like support, people who like impact protection, and a smooth transition. It's kind of like the outsole durability issue that Puma had on the TRC Blades court. When you're an up-and-coming brand and you're trying to establish some credibility in the basketball space, especially when it's so dominated by Nike, you can't have these kinds of issues. When you have more shoes that you've pulled off the market than you currently have on the market, that's not a good look. If you have a pair of either of these, like I said, drop a comment, let me know what you think about them, let me know what you think about the performance, and have you encountered any of these quality control issues? I'll keep y'all updated on social media regarding my broken foot in case any of y'all care about that. And hopefully I will be back on the court sooner rather than later. But that's about all I've got for today's video. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, peace and much love to you.